Hey guys, we cover a lot of optics on this channel and every chance I get, I like to point out that solar panels on red dots are a gimmick. They just make the optic more expensive and more complicated and none of them have ever provided a real tangible benefit. I get the impression that Sig Sauer's optics division agrees with me because they've been removing solar panels from a lot of their more recent models. The last time Trigicon made an optic with a solar panel was in 2013. But Holosun has not gotten rid of solar panels. Instead, they've doubled down and gotten rid of batteries instead. Today, we're going to be talking about the new Holosun SCRS, the Solar Charging Reflex Sight. This is a rifle-mounted version of the SCS, the Solar Charging Sight, which they made to direct mount to various pistol platforms. All right, punch it. This video was made possible by supporters of the channel on Subscribestar. Check out the links in the video description for ways to support the show, and thank you for watching. All right, before we get into the specifics of the Holosun SCRS, we have to cover the basics of solar-powered red dot sights, because I think most proponents of solar sights don't actually know how they work. Most of the Holosun red dots that have solar panels use it for a solar mode, which is separate from the battery-operated mode. The solar mode automatically adjusts the brightness of the optic depending on the ambient lighting conditions and also attempts to power the optic using just the solar panel. If there isn't sufficient light to power the optic, then it will fall back on battery power. However, the brightness will still be controlled by the solar sensor in this mode. And that's what makes the solar mode on these optics essentially useless. The automatic brightness control means the dot will always be too dim all the time in all conditions, with no exceptions. There have been a bunch of attempts on these optics to reposition the lighting sensor so that it can see forward. So if you're, for example, undercover and you're in a darker environment, but you're aiming out into a brighter one, you're still able to see the dot because it automatically turns up to match the outside lighting conditions rather than the actual light that's falling onto the optic itself. A valiant effort to be sure, but it hasn't worked yet and I suspect it won't ever. Even if you're in an indoor environment that's relatively evenly lit, the automatic brightness modes tend to be way too dim. And if you want to use one of these red dots in conjunction with a weapon light, you end up with the same problem as aiming out into a brighter environment because you're aiming into the hotspot created by your own light, but the dot stays dim because you're still in shadow yourself. On all of these older Holosun optics with solar modes, when you take them out of the automatic brightness control mode, then the solar panel is no longer being used at all. Remember that you cannot safely recharge a lithium primary cell. I mean, I guess you could try to put some voltage into it, but it'll just blow the fuck up. So the dot can either be powered by the solar panel or powered by the battery cell, but the battery cannot be recharged or even really supplemented by the solar cell. In theory, though, that's actually how the Trigicon SRS sealed reflex sight, which we've talked about before, and the original Sig Romeo 4T worked. Both of those optics claim to use the solar cell to passively supplement the battery so that it would extend the life of the battery as long as there was sufficient lighting. Anyway, there are a couple of Holosun models that are large enough that they actually have room in them for a supercapacitor. The supercapacitor models of Holosun include the HS510, the HE512, and the AIMS. These optics have a primary cell battery that provides the power most of the time, but they also have a small capacitor inside that is charged whenever the optic is in sunlight. In the event that the battery is removed or somehow goes completely dead, then the optic can still run off of the supercapacitor even if it's not in automatic brightness mode. This allows you to turn the dot up way brighter than would normally be allowed in any of the solar modes. Normally when you're in automatic brightness mode on one of the hollow sun dots, you can press the plus button to go to high automatic mode or the minus button to go to low automatic mode. Low automatic mode is literally invisible, high automatic mode is just too dim. With the supercapacitor models, as long as there's some charge in the capacitor, you can crank the brightness all the way up and use it like a normal red dot, albeit only for maybe a handful of hours. It's not going to last for, you know, 50,000 hours, but at least it should get you a few hours into the night, maybe all the way to the next morning. The supercapacitor mode is pretty cool. I still don't think it's that big of a selling point. You'll probably never find it useful ever in your entire life, but it's definitely nice to have because those optics are certainly large enough for a little bit of extra circuitry. I think the confusion among buyers is that they think that the regular Holosun solar mode is this supercapacitor mode, even though it's really only available on a very small number of their optics. But the new SCS and SCRS are optics that actually work the way people want slash think the other Holosun optics should operate. They do not have a removable primary cell battery at all. There is an internal rechargeable battery that cannot be removed, and that is charged by the solar panel on top. Unlike the supercapacitor, which will last for a handful of hours, this one is supposed to last for multiple thousands of hours. So as long as the optic gets a regular recharge from the sunlight, it's going to be good to go. 
The Holosun SCRS still has an automatic solar mode, just like all the other Holosun dots, and just like on all those other dots, it's completely fucking useless, but that's okay because it also has a regular manual mode. Adjust the brightness up and down as far as you want and just rely on that solar cell to keep the battery charged and not to fuck up your dot brightness when you don't want it to. This is mode number one. This is automatic solar. You can see if we cover the solar cell, the dot becomes invisible. This is not quite as robust as the solar sensors on the SCS. Those do a better job of covering for ambient light. This one, if it's not in direct sunlight, it's just too dim. You can go to solar high mode, as you can see, which still doesn't make a difference because as long as the sensor isn't getting direct illumination, the dot is completely useless. Now we're in manual mode, it's still completely powered by the solar cell and the internal battery, but we can control the brightness manually as if it was a normal red dot. So that's maximum. We can drop it all the way down into the lowest night vision setting and all the way back up into the brightest daylight setting with the button controls, just like we like. The SCS solar charging site was announced first. It is a pistol optic that directly mounts to a bunch of different footprints, including the Glock MOS pattern, the Walther PDP, and the Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0 without using any adapter plates. So right off the bat, that's pretty freaking sweet. A lot of those pistols require you to replace the iron sights if you want to co-witness through a red dot because of how tall most of them sit after you put one on top of an adapter plate. With the SCS being direct mountable, yes, that does mean that you have to have a different model of optic to fit each model of pistol, but they sit super low. You're not stacking the optic on top of a plate on top of a pistol, creating multiple potential failure points or screws to come loose. The standard iron sights should co-witness for pretty much all of those models. And just for a little extra flair, all of the different versions of the SCS are visually modeled to match the pistols they go on. So yeah, there's a lot to like there, but I already have optics and plates and co-witness sights for my PDP, and I don't own a Glock MOS and probably never will, so it's not really something I'm going to buy. The other advantage the SCS has over a regular pistol red dot is that it will last a lot longer before you need to replace it. And by replace it, I mean replace the entire optic because it's not user serviceable. If you keep your pistol red dot on and it's at a usable brightness, you'll probably expect to get maybe a year or maybe a little bit more than that out of most pistol optics on the market. So you could remember to replace the battery every year on your birthday, like a lot of people do, or with the SCS, you could just stick your gun in the windowsill periodically and hope your neighbors enjoy the view. Eventually the rechargeable battery in the SCS or the SCRS will fail and you have to send it back to Holosun to get refurbished. Although it should last, I don't know, maybe four years, maybe as much as 10 years. I'm not 100% sure. I assume like with most batteries, how often you allow the site to fully discharge and fully charge back up is going to affect the overall battery life. So as cool as I think the SCS might be, the SCRS made very little sense to me when I first saw it at SHOT Show. This is essentially an enclosed version of the SCS that's intended exclusively for use on a rifle. It's actually very similar to the Holosun 509T, has basically the same performance and optical characteristics, and also uses the same mount. However, Holosun makes it very clear on the packaging and in the manual that you should not mount one of these to a handgun. I don't know if it's significantly less ruggedized than the 509T, but they say not to. You could totally do it, you just probably shouldn't because I assume Holosun had a pretty good reason for putting that on the packaging. The SCRS comes with a lower one-third riser for the 509T pattern that's attached with a single cross bolt and a quarter inch nut. This mount is actually fairly impressive. Their use of a quarter inch nut is a lot more robust than the use of a Torx T10 cross bolt like on a lot of their cheaper rifle sights. The mount itself also has a very robust looking cruciform cross section, so that part certainly doesn't seem like the weak part of the mount to me. However, I do wonder if you were to drop a fully loaded rifle on top of this thing, if the 509T cross bolt system would actually hold up to that much weight. The 509T mount can certainly hold up to handgun recoil, so it's probably going to be fine, but still, I do kind of wonder, maybe Focus Strip is going to have to throw one of these things against a boulder for us. The SCRS is available in the MRS version, multiple reticle system, which is the one that I have right here that allows you to switch back and forth between the circle dot and the regular dot or the circle only. One difference between the 509T and the SCRS is that the circle dot reticle option on this one is the 65 MOA circle rather than the 32 MOA circle you find on the pistol dots. 
The prototype version of this that I saw at SHOT Show looked pretty bad. There was a really bad blue tint to the glass and a ton of distortion. It looked like one of Holosun's old gen pistol sights. The final production version though looks way better. I think this one actually basically looks exactly the same as a 509T X2. The original 509T had more blue tint and more edge distortion and the X2 model looks a lot better. The performance under night vision is again basically the exact same as the 509T or the Holosun EPS full size. They have the same brightness settings, very good, they get very dim, and they have very good light transmission relative to a tiny window. Maybe the most intriguing potential application for the SCRS then is as a piggyback optic. If you put one of these things on an offset or piggyback mount in conjunction with a magnified scope, it would be essentially the same as a 509T or any other pistol optic, but a little bit lower maintenance. Between this and the 509T X2, they both have very similar performance. They're both enclosed. They both have the same mounting footprint, but the SCRS is quite a bit bigger. It's also cheaper. I don't think the SCRS would be a good choice for a bad gun. First of all, remember we want to keep it on manual mode because the automatic mode is guaranteed to be too dim when we deploy this gun in a hurry. So instead we're going to have it in manual mode with the dot brightness turned up pretty high because we want to keep this thing ready to go and visible in most conditions. So if we're storing this thing in a bag where it cannot recharge for the sunlight and the battery life with the internal cell is maybe 4,000 hours, but again, since we're keeping it pretty bright, maybe more like 1,000 hours. This thing is going to die way faster than a traditional battery-powered Holosun. This is also not the holy grail of red dots for preppers, in the same way that none of the previous solar-powered sites were. If you have a regular red dot and you don't run it on full blast brightness all the time, and you have one spare battery, you're probably going to get about 10 years of life out of it. For those of you with that specific electronic paranoia, you're still better off with something that has an etched reticle, because as far as I know, the Chinese still haven't invented an EMP that can eliminate glass etchings. So that's the SCRS. Does it fill a role not previously occupied by any other Holosun product? Not really. It does have some aspects that make it theoretically more appealing than a standard red dot with just one battery, although probably not as appealing as a standard red dot with two batteries, your second battery stored in your pistol grip or your rifle stock or your kitchen drawer. As for me, am I going to stop complaining about solar panels on red dots? Yes, but only because I've now said everything there is to say. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you'd like to support me more directly, there are links in the video description to my Subscribestar page and my Linktree page. Follow the Linktree link for affiliate, sponsorship, social media, and Discord if that's what you're into. And if you go over to Subscribestar, you can support this channel directly. You'll get access to early videos, a bunch of bonus videos that never get posted to the main channel, really nerdy reviews of specific gear or accessories, and access to the archived live show and podcast stuff that I do with Brass Facts and the rest of the Nova Group. I will see you guys again soon.